some action for you there from Nigerian professional football leader has to do with Abia Warriors and Plateau United. We just have to always celebrate our own good football at history there. Welcoming you on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Ajishafe, where we have to actually congratulate Roma, AS Roma. They did it well just by a long go, but they are the champions when it comes to Europa Conference League. For the first time, when that competition actually debuted, well, AS Roma, Mourinho, the man that has been celebrating just since yesterday, is now a very happy man, winning that trophy against uh, Feyenoord, as they were able to win uh, against Feyenoord in that game. One nil, Nicolo Zaniolo, making it possible for AS Roma, the sleeping giant. But this time around, they are not sleeping. They went out and they got it. Congratulations to AS Roma. Welcoming you once again on the show, 360 Sport. But we'll be starting from the whole scene. Let's talk about handball, where Prudent Energy Handball League has been taking place, has been at least ongoing right, right now in Abuja. But let's quickly look at the results as it went down for men and women. It off, uh, when you talk about the Prudent Energy Handball League, we have team for men and we have team for women, actually, as they play those games. But now let's look at uh, the table as it stands in, for men and also for women. If you look at the table for uh, for men now, Kano Pillars, right now, they are the defending champions. They are really running to make sure they win it again. After playing three matches they have nine points followed by safety shooters also having nine points you have niger united confluence stars seasiders of lagos trailing with seven points apiece you have Rima strikers of sokoto with six points to Jemarine academy with five Benno Bivalos, you have Police Machine on five point apiece, and you have the Defenders, that's NSC DC team, they have four points, or Winner Kings with three points, and Kada Stars, well, they didn't show up, so they have zero uh, point. They are a good ones, so match day three, three games played by all the team there, and for the women, you have Safety Babes, Safety Babes are really top in here, really showing the class they have, and you have Rima Queens also, uh, second on the law with Eight points after playing three matches, uh, goal score 84. And against them, 81. You have a goal difference of three. You have Bender Dynamos actually standing third there with seven points. Defender Babes are fourth. Emo Grasshoppers, they are sixth on the log. I have Plateau Peacocks also having five points alongside Seasider Babes, Adorable Babes, and you have Benway Queens also having five points apiece. Well, Kada Queens also it didn't show up. So far, all the teams have participated in the Women and for Men's uh, League there at the Prudent Energy Handball Premier League. That's the, uh, the top uh, tier league of handball in Nigeria. We have to celebrate the fact that all the teams participating, they have been trying their best to make sure they play handball at the full, at least uh, fullest, uh, giving a lot of uh, handball artistry, uh, showing their style when it comes to playing handball. Congrats to all the team leading. It's still open for any team to win. But from the way it is, Kano Pillars, well, safety babes are really showing class where they are defending champion when it comes to handball in Nigeria. Joining me to talk sport this morning is Joel Ajayi. Good to have you, Joel. Good morning to you. Good morning. So we just me highlighting uh, handball there, where all the teams uh, we have uh, safety babes doing well. We have Kano Pillar showing class. Although Emo Grasshoppers too, they are not lacking behind. They've been showing class in this comp uh, competition. Adorable babes uh, and uh, the defenders as a team of NSC DC. Well, this season seems to be a bit tough uh, because uh, all the teams are really close. You have nine, eight, seven, five points apiece, and the same thing with the women. Uh, honestly, it's, it's an in interesting game. It's an ongoing interesting game. If you uh, find your time to just uh, just dash into MKO Abiola Stadium in Abuja, you will be able to see the top uh, game of handball in, in Nigeria. But beside that, I we want to just uh, try, uh, appreciate the, the the federation because. Uh, uh, be it as it may, we are seeing it uh, phase one and phase two. But my appeal will just go that we want to see like a Nigeria Professional Football League where they play every week, where they will make sure that we play certain... Uh, it's run like, run a, like, a, like, a, like a normal league because this one is just a phase. This phase is uh, is being played in Abuja right now and the second phase will be playing in Lagos. Lagos. We want to see something more than that. It means you are developing uh, handball in two 
two, two, cities. two cities, which to me is, is not something that is uh, good for the, for the growth of the game. If you are doing it in Kano, you are doing it in uh, Port Harcourt, you are doing it in Akwaibon, you are doing it in Ibadan and every other part of the country, it will bring a whole lot of uh, values of the game and then people will know that something is happening because this one, if not for Trust TV and other media that is carrying it in many parts of the country, many people might not know that there is something like this that mm -hmm. is going on in Abuja. But if you are playing it in their own particular state, they will be able to say, okay, let me just go and have fun, let me go and catch fun. From there, you might even have interest of your uh, one of your children that just pick them and pick interest in Ambo and be playing. And then tomorrow, he or she might be the champions of or, or, of uh, handball in the in, in the country for me is uh, is something that we need to applaud the the federation but they need to do more they need to try as much as possible to ensure that all the part of the country are involved in developing this uh, particular uh, handball game in the country and you look at the fact that uh, from the way it's just like you mentioned okay if it's run like a league in different cities in nigeria aside the fact that a lot of handballers will come out to enjoy it there will also be some economic value added to those cities because a lot of people will come to watch De definitely that's where i was even going because if you want to uh, attest to what I'm trying to say right now. Just go to uh, Monshu the Abiola Stadium in Abuja. You see a whole lot of activities. Uh, the food vendor are making money. Pure water people, all those people, petty, petty trader, are making uh, uh, their money because the game is happening in that particular place. So if the game is happening in all that part of the country, like the way it's happening in Abuja right now, it means the market woman will sell, the pure water uh, women will sell, even those people that they transport. Because you cannot just go to MK Abiola, uh, Mansudi Abiola Stadium uh, with a bare leg. The transport will even get more money, the trader will get money, even the food vendor. The, the water vendor, they will get money, and then it's we bring smile to some to to, to some fam, to, to some family. I think we need to to replicate uh, that particular kind of uh, tournament or game in all parts of the country. In all parts of the country, hopefully we can just get it right when it comes to handball. We've been talking about the Pune Energy Handball League, where we're in Abuja and also the coming up in Lagos. Phase one is ongoing, and phase two becoming up in Lagos. Joel Ajay has been advocating that it should go around the country. After all, we can make it six uh, zones where at least uh, all the six geopolitical zones can actually have where we can develop handball well. Uh, all the teams coming together to Abuja or to Lagos, they will also be able to spread the wings of that particular sport in Nigeria. A lot of clubs are participating, both for men and for women, and they've been very, very fantastic. Looking at the handball league, a lot of matches, uh, games that are playing day three. We just roll out the table there, how we're standing. But from the way it is, we just have to move on to talk about... Uh, Basketball. Basketball has uh, been a, a sport in Nigeria that a lot of people love to watch, also play. But recently, when it comes to the international level, the federal government issued out that for the next two years, we won't be participating in basketball. Well, uh, Musa Kida, as the MBBF president for one faction, we have Mark Iguchi and other faction that are actually fighting concerning the leadership tussle uh, and that actually ensued concerning MBBF. But right now, Kida is saying, well, the interim management committee is set up by the federal government, uh, court seal of the federal minister of and sport. It wouldn't uh, stand by that, it wouldn't recognize it because they are interfering with interfering with basketball in Nigeria. And that right now is another issue why we are trying to settle and see how we can grow this sport in Nigeria. It's at least to understand what the problem is concerning the sports of basketball in Nigeria. Unfortunately for us, it's a sad incident for us because this problem started since 2017 mm. when we have the then uh, Minister of Sports, uh, Solomon Dalong. And then... I, I think, in my own opinion, and then to be, to be candid to ourselves uh, as a stakeholder, uh, federal government, I think they, they are in haste in giving the judgment of uh, basketball. This problem did not start today. The problem started 2017 when we have uh, two factions that time, um, the like of Umaru Tijan and then the same uh, Musakida. But as a government that have the interest of the game, you must know how you can just arrange and make sure that, that you do not subject the game to this kind of uh, shape. Hmm. 
that we are, we are experiencing this time around. And then be it as it may, in 2017, we had issue. But from that 2017, 2018, the during the time we had crisis in nation, we were able to rule Africa three times. The Tigress, they did it back to back to back. Mm. We, have, we have crisis, and then we are winning. Even during that period, we still went ahead to beat the like of US, the like, the like of China in friendly. It might be friendly, but it is on record for the first time in history. Mm. And then those period we are in crisis. So I don't see the reason why the federal government will now say that you are putting embargo or you are putting ban on the basketball in the next two years. Be it as it may, I want you to quote me, God will spare our life. After two years, we, st we are still going to have crisis in basketball. Because what I think government need to do, you are the one that dictate the tone. What Dalong did that time was that Dalong said, okay, oh, I am working with this group. This is the group that the federal government is working. That, is, that was the reason why Kida was in the government for three the good years. Okay. And then he, he, he did extremely well, despite the fact that there is, there is crisis. He did extremely well mm. in terms of... So I, I didn't expect the, the now Minister of uh, Sports, uh, my brother, Shandi uh, Dari, okay. to just uh, maybe discuss with the federal government and say this, that is the best solution. I don't think uh, cutting the head is the solution to the headache. You mm. have to look at something that you can use to cure the headache. It's not as if you say, okay, because I'm having a headache, the best thing for me is to cut my head. Mm. It's not possible because now... Basketballer will suffer, player will suffer, the federation will suffer, and then we will not be there. It means when we are, if they relaunch us back in the next two years in basketball, it means we are going to start from scratch because we have some people that are aiming that position that Nigeria has. Okay, to be now, sincere with herself. Okay, now coming to what you just said, that we're going yeah. to start again, but recently mm -hmm. the same Ministry of Sports said, okay, we'll be organizing under 18 boys and girls competition across Nigeria for us to be able to revitalize basketball. Uh, my, my, my brother, mm -hmm. it's just like, it's, for me, it's just like a misplaced of priority. Mm -hmm. There is no day in Nigeria that we have not been organized uh, competition. competition like that. In Lagos, there is ongoing competition in, uh, in uh, Ibadan. Olumide is there doing it. In Abuja, yeah, we all witness what uh, Igoche is doing. They mark the ball. But all those things cannot give us the international reputation that we are looking for. Mm. If you nurture them now, let's say you organize a competition now, you are able to capture them young. How will you showcase them? When are you going to showcase them? In the next two years, those set of players will just fiddle out. And other people... We st you still discover some people. It means you are still going to, uh, to start from the beginning. So my own is that instead of you doing that, government should... We had the, the same issue in uh, AFN. But government decided I'm working with the Okoa led, uh, led, led uh, president. And then today, we, are, they, we don't have much issue in AFN. So for me, in basketball, no matter how uh, every weight behind uh, all this issue, you should be able to use the wisdom of Solomon to settle this matter amicably. Because this thing is affecting all Nigeria now. Now we've qualified for the World Cup, the women, the, the Tigers, both the men and women. We won't be able to go. That is why you see FIBA writing, reminding us that we are to participate in that particular. And then if we fail to participate, it means we are going to expect a whole lot of, a, a whole lot of uh, acts that is coming to cut us a, a, as a nation. <laughs> that is the truth of the matter. Well, we've been talking hand, uh, basketball. Well, just uh, concerning that particular issue, I still don't understand what the problem is with that particular sport in Nigeria. Basketball, uh, basketball seems to be having a lot of issues while we're trying to solve one. And that one will be rearing his ugly head, talking about uh, Musa Akida not accepting the interim management committee set up by the federal government. He says, well, that has to do with interference to that particular sport. While he was saying that, FIBA also wrote a letter, at least, at least uh, administering the fact that, well, according to Article 9.6, uh, that's a FIBA statute, that, well, uh, what they expect is that the MBBF should be allowed to run the affairs of that federation. No interference coming. And if that happens, that means Nigeria may not be able to participate at the 2024 Olympics. That's number one. Number two, the World Cup for Women that will be coming up in Australia, and also the FIBA uh, FIBA uh, qualifiers that will also be coming up 
So it means three in one. Well, fever actually threatening right now. They are sending that one into Nigeria because of the fact that we actually mentioned 10 representatives or rather committees set up to administer basketball in Nigeria. And now, from the way it is, FIBA, not FIFA now, FIBA ban <laughs> is looming. Yeah. Uh, because uh, according to FIBA, they recognize uh, MBBF led by Musa Kida. Uh, they don't recognize Mark Igochi. And from the way it is, federal government set up a uh, 10-man interim management committee. Kida is saying, no, we, we too, we don't recognize this. A lot of issues here and there. FIBA is now saying, okay, because of this, if you don't reverse this, we won't recognize your team playing at the World Cup. We won't allow you to do uh, 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 Olympic Games 2024 and also the qualifier FIBA World Cup for men also. The, the truth of the matter is that there's, there are so many things that we don't understand as a layman when we are talking about basketball. We know we are, we are dealing with international organization. They don't want to know whether you are the one that was there before. Mm. What they know is that they have a status, a constitution that is governing your federation in your country. And then when we had issue, before all the stakeholders will come together and look at the status that will be guiding that federation in their country. But fortunately for us as a nation, when we had issue with uh, Umar and Kida, Kida was in place and the federal government recognized the Kida. He was the one that put in place with his lead board, put in place a status, a constitution that will be governing Basketball in Nigeria. And then they were submitted. I think they are the first, first federation to submit uh, uh, their status or their condition to the, to the international, international body. And then it was ratified by international body. So for me, as a nation, that's why my annoyance is coming from. As a nation, instead of you, you can call all the stakeholders together. Okay, well, there is a, a, something that we need to amend in this constitution. You can sit on the right round table and ensure that you will rectify whatsoever thing that you want to rectify in that particular condition. But now, FIBA has recognized that Nigeria have condition that is governing them. And then you say that because it is one fashion that made that condition is not acceptable. In Nigeria, it's only one person that represents us. Okay, I want to ask a question. Yeah. Can the federal government actually, okay, I saw a particular story that says that if the two factions can come together, yeah at least arrive at equilibrium where they can sit down, accept, and at least work together, then that two-year ban can be lifted. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is we that we ban ourselves. If we put our house in order, How do we if, put we, it in order? if we put our house in order, by saying that, by rescind that particular statement, that's the only thing that can solve this problem. Even if we solve the problem, the international body, which is FIBA, will not still recognize Nigeria. Because we have the consistent that is guiding the federation in the country. And then anything outside that, anything government did, hmm. is, they will see it as interference. Well, we've just been talking basketball, that sport, really. I just wish uh, that particular, I don't know what I'll call it, is it demo or whatever it is, <laughs> let it just leave that sport and let the men and women enjoy it. Did it digress? So painful. Well, the World Cup is coming so close, and they might not just be there. And this literally really try their best to qualify. It won't be good at all if they won't make it. Well, we've been talking basketball, which also that everything will go well with that dunk and slam sport in Nigeria. Now let's leave basketball and talk football. A, guru, a very good night for uh, Jose Mourinho and his lads. They were able to do well at Tirana Stadium as he won that encounter by a long goal score by Zaniolo Nicolo. They did well. They won the Europa Conference League. Congrats to Jose Mourinho. The man that has done it, becoming the first man to win all the European tr trophies. Chef Champions League, Europa Cup, Europa Conference League, and also in style. Being the first time that this league will be coming up, Mourinho did well with his lad. Good one for them. They are really celebrating. I really actually uh, <laughs> love the fact that Mourinho won. Anyway. Uh, I think his name is uh, following him because he said he's the special one. <laughs> I, I, I think he's a, he, to me, every, people might have diverse opinion regarding the Jose Mourinho, but to me, it's a special one because uh, I was watching uh, Real Madrid Man City when we, we, the, the, they played match reached 20, uh, 90 minutes. And then Man City was leading. Immediately they scored that goal. I said it within me that if it were to be Morio that is leading this Man City, the whole 11 player will hang on the, on the pole. 
and then no ball will no no ball will enter that net that mm -hmm. very particular day. But all uh, as case may be, I we want to con congratulate the uh, Jose Mourinho, and then for the fact that he always break the record. Uh, since 20, uh, I think 2008, uh, his AS Roman has not been uh, winning any trophy. And then he came along the line. They, we discussed it here times without number. They nearly sacked uh, Morio uh, because of uh, the poor run of the in, in the league game. But today he's making them proud. I think it's a very good one for Portugal because uh, anywhere he goes, he tries as much as possible to make his mark. In Madrid, he did the same thing. In Manchester United, despite the fact that all, almost all the players are on crutches for uh, the he was able to, able to manage and, and, and bring the results. And then that is, for me, that is what we are expecting. It's not how far it, you, you, you do something. It's, it is the result that counts for you. Mm -hmm. That is why today is one of the, play, uh, the, the, the co co coaches that have won the five European, European top trophy. So... Uh, as, as, as far as I'm concerned, let's give it to him. He's a good, he might not play beautiful football like Arsenal, but he's, but he's, getting, the, the, he's getting the result. He's getting the trophy. Why do those people that are playing uh, beautiful, good beautiful football. football are getting the bash? Who and, are those uh, and people? That I, don't want, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go there, oh my but you understand me better. I, I don't know that. Any. I wanted to mention those people that play beautiful football and they are not getting the result. What a way to throw banter and jab at clubs there. Well, we've been talking about Jose Mourinho and ES Roma, they did well. They were able to win against Feyenoord. So painful for Siri Desa, who couldn't win it. But quickly, before we go, two Nigerians right now are actually talking about discussion concerning transfer. We're talking about Galatasaray are interested in Emmanuel Dennis. Dennis played for Watford, and now Watford, well, they relegated. But from the way it is, it's possible that Dennis could be moving away. West Ham showed interest, and now it is Galatasaray of Turkey who wants this front man who could be joining them. If everything goes well, he could be moving to join them over there in Turkey. And lastly, it's going to be about Osime. Victor Osime's agent actually holds talk with us now, and that has been going around. And let's see what's going to happen. First, it was Newcastle. Then later, Tottenham Hotspur, Manchester United. But now, Arsenal seems to be more interested in the Nigerian. Well, from the way it is, it's possible that Osime could be moving. I think it would be a very good move for the young one. Mm. But people are looking at Champions League for him. Uh, See, what people don't know about football is that you cannot play Champions League without playing all the, all the lower, lower mm. aspect of it. Mm. Because that, that is the only thing that will single you out when you are playing Champions League. Mm. So for me, it's a very good move for, if this, the, the move see the light of the day. It will be a very good one for the young guy. Let's see if Osime will join in the Gunners. If everything goes according to Joel Ajayi there, it's be, it will be a wonderful one to see him playing for that team. That's it on 360 Sport. A wonderful time with you, Joel Ajayi. Thank you. I'm very grateful to be here this morning. Good one there. We always tell you that sport is business and fitness. Keep doing it. It will actually give you something wonderful. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.